one player which struck me as amazing at the time was Anelka. Mm. Because mm. during this period, the great strikers, you know, Shearer, all-time Premier League top goal scorer, Robbie Fowler, they were all there, but Anelka felt like something different compared to them. Why? The pace. Mm -hmm. It's just that the raw pace when he's running at you mm. looked electrifying. Now, that yeah. was for me as a viewer. Yeah. I don't know how it was like, how you viewed him as a, as a colleague, a teammate. He, he was different in the sense that he just had this quiet edge to him. And I remember, because we were the same age, we signed at pretty much the same time, exactly the same age. Uh, we roomed together a couple of times early on, and he was very, quite quiet, um, but he was like, like an assassin on the pitch. Mm. He would just direct. That's it. He the was directness. just so direct and it wasn't fast. Any, it, wasn't, it wasn't doing loads of elaborate stuff. It was like, this is what I can do. His movement, in terms of how he, he would see the, the play building up in midfield, and he would just be spun and <clears throat> gone. And when Arsenal were at their best, when hit with him in the team, any early pass in behind, or so someone like Dennis Burkamp just drawing defenders in and yeah. creating space, he was uh, frightening. Um, when it comes to Anelka, how do you view his career? Because he almost rebuilt himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was it Bolton? And then after that, suddenly, you know, Chelsea and mm. Liverpool, and he won trophies, but he was also at Real Madrid. And I'm not sure what to make of his career. Do you mm. think he fulfilled his potential? Um, I, I think everyone has their journey. Mm. And... I think he left Arsenal very early and I think that was the big decision that maybe shaped what happened in that short term few seasons after that because obviously his, every, his talent was hugely recognised at that point because he, the impact he'd had at Arsenal but he was still only 19. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it sent shockwaves yeah. when he asked to leave, yeah. I, yeah. I remember that. And, and he had a, he had a, a, a manager in Arsene Wenger who was probably the, the ideal person for him at that time and would have protected him, managed him in the way that would, you know, would, would have maybe helped him. Instead, he was thrust into the limelight at Real Madrid and a huge responsibility, a big price tag. And uh, you go to Real Madrid with that, that kind of position and with that money, you expected to go, I'm the finished article, this is what I am. And I don't think he quite was then. Mm. Um, and I think that was a difficult period for him. Obviously, it's always a hard thing to turn down. You know, as a, as a dreaming of, of, of playing for Real Madrid at that, at that time, in that position is an incredible opportunity. Yeah. Because um, even when... Portuguese Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo went. He was already, I think, 24? Yeah. 25, so he, was, yeah. he had matured. I mean, it's a big won difference. The, he'd won the Champions League with yeah. United already. And yeah, and he'd played how many seasons at United then? Four full seasons? Something like that, Four yeah. or five? Yeah. You know, you're, you're at that point where, okay, I think I'm ready. So, <clears throat> I think from that perspective, maybe things could have been different. But like you say, he, he got through that. And, and he'll probably look back on that now as a, as a really positive experience for mm. him in life and, and how, he, how he views that, came back and was th that kind of player again. What he did at Bolton. Yeah. I mean, it sounds bizarre, didn't it? Nicholas Anelka yeah. turning up at Bolton. And, but he was incredible. Must have been a nightmare to play yeah, against. Yeah, though. yeah. I remember, um, I remember he left and to Manchester City, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. And I remember going up to, before they moved to the Etihad to Main Road. And I saw him before the game and we had a chat. And I was, you know, I was playing against you today and he was, we were laughing, having a joke. And, and then he, uh, he ran into the corner and I, I ran with him. We were sprinting and then he faced me up. And we, he, we had this passage of play where he must have had the ball for about, it felt like forever, but he kept changing direction, chopping. And that's what really t takes it out of your legs when you, you've got a player that keeps chopping and twisting and yeah. turning. And I, and I remember jogging back into position and he was just like, we were both next to each other and he looked at me and he went, you tired? I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, can you stop doing that? Can you, can, can you not do that anymore? Because yeah. that, that was horrible. It took me about five minutes to get my legs back and my breath. And 
that was the type of, of player that he was. He was just he was just so fast and so direct that when you played against him, you knew that you, you were going to have to get your running shoes on. Yeah, yes. Um, he, he was a quick player. And I guess as good as I thought Onelka was, when Henri arrived, I mean, he had the pace, mm. which Onelka had, but he had that, he had more ability in terms of trickery and yeah. all of that. I'm sure Onelka had it as well, maybe he just chose not to use it, but Henri could combine all of this mm. together. And he was probably three, four steps ahead of everybody on the pitch when he's there. Mm. He's thinking of yeah. three, four steps down the line, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. Th there aren't many players that can grab games by the scruff of the neck at, at the highest level and make the difference. And he was one. Because he, he was so graceful, wasn't he? The way he played and he, the, how, how fluid his movement was, was just incredible. And a little bit similar in when you look at someone like Harlan today in that sometimes you'd play in the first 20 minutes, he wouldn't touch the ball that much. Mm. Uh, and then all of a sudden he'd just come to life. And they're the hardest players to play against because you, you, you you're on the bus home after the game, you've just been beat they might have scored a goal or won the game or for the team or whatever. You kind of think, what could I have done differently or what could I have done better? And sometimes they, it's like they're not in the game, so you don't, have an op you don't impose yourself on them or there's just this one moment that makes the difference. And he, he was very clever like that. And obviously he would then have games where he'd have loads of the ball, he would have big passages of play, look at some of the goals he scored, <laughs> the impact he had, you know, North London derbies. You know, famous goal at home against Spurs where he runs past five uh, the players halfway and bangs line it and in his left foot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he was an incredible player. What's your first memory of him when he turned up for training? Um, my first memory was... Shit. No. <laughs> no <laughs> right, right midfielder. He was kind mm. of playing. Wide, he was a wide player. Yeah. And he sat on the bench. First game he was sat on the bench. I was sat next to him. We were chatting about the game. And... Very quickly, Arsene Wenger moved him central, literally probably after having him for six weeks. All of a sudden became a, a centre-forward. Could you see you were special in training now, that he was... Just ridiculous pace. Mm. An almost pace that he could just, felt like he just turn it on at will. Whereas uh, Anelka was very much, that was his game. You knew the pace was coming all the time because he was just that direct player. But Thierry would sometimes mix it up, go slow, play around with the ball, lure people in. Yeah. Or he could just hurt you with direct pace as well. So he, he would, he, yeah, he had that more all round game, didn't he, that you were mentioning at the start? Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking back, <clears throat> I mean, we got Lee Sharp in the country as well, and he was very much a poster boy in gigs. But at this stage, it felt like Arsenal, particularly of Henri, was mm. making footballers into even bigger celebrities. Va va voom. Yeah. Um, the ad, what was it? Citroen or something? Renault. Renault, sorry, Renault. And when you see that and it's in the cultural zeitgeist, I still remember it now. Mm. Va va voom. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, how do you say this in English? Yeah, well, yeah. whatever the, they said in the ad. Yeah. It just felt like the Premier League was becoming sexy, for lack of a better <clears throat> word, you know? And I think a lot of it has to do with Arsenal and players like Henri. Yeah, I'd, ag I'd agree with that. Had a big impact on the game. Huge. For sure, yeah, and like I say, a lot of that comes from the manager. What Arsene Wenger did, and that was a big change for for English football. Having a coach like him coming in, having that success in the way that he had it with the players that he had, and what that became, I, I agree. You didn't you didn't notice it back then. You were just playing football, mm. um, but when you step back now, all these years later, you look at it and go, it was very very influential. Is he a, a vocal presence, Henri, in the dressing room? Yeah, I think he, he, he probably more so obviously as he became captaincy. Yes. And players, you know, like Tony Adams that left the club and, and Patrick Vieira moved on and, and what have you. I think he obviously grew into that role as you naturally would with experience and, and, and responsibility. But yeah, he, he was always somebody that so self assured, so confident. Like I say, he had that swagger, that arrogance. Vavavoom. The, the Vavavoom he had. And he had that in abundance.